old man. What'd you call me? You heard me. No, I'm already over halfway there, but I hope you enjoyed the thumbnail for this one. I thought that was pretty funny. Anyway, um, this Neil Young tune is kind of deceptively easy. It's not that hard to play, but it's hard, not hard, but more difficult than it sounds to get right and sound like the recording. So I'm going to take you through each specific part, break it down uh, line by line, and you'll be able to play along to it. You don't have to be as precise and as specific as the parts. You know, once you have the general idea, you can play something in that vein. But I, I kind of was a little bit more specific on this than I would be if I was playing it like in a cover band or something like that. Now, if you want to see the full performance of this song, you can just skip to the end of the video. I put it there for you too. It's kind of a condensed version, or I leave out the second verse and the second chorus since they're the same thing as the first verse and the verse chorus, so you don't have to watch through the whole thing. But there's that for you. I have the tab for you for the song, and I have a jam track for you if you want to play along to it. And if you need any kind of help with it, just go to natesavage.com. You can download all that stuff there, but you can also book a private lesson with me if you need it. This song in particular is really good to learn and kind of build your vocabulary for uh, putting motion in your chords um, in this style of music, kind of folk rock stuff like this. Those types of things. So let's get into the first part, the intro. That's the first part of the intro. You play that twice, and let's break things down a little bit slower here. Uh, you have this chord, which I'm calling a D minor nine. And all it is is a D sus two chord slid up to where your index finger is on the fifth fret of the G, and your third finger is on the sixth fret of the B. And you're gonna use just the top four strings to play this. And you palm mute the D and G strings, first of all, and then you hit them again with another downstroke and lift your first finger off, open, and then hammer on. So, and then leave that shape there. With another downstroke, hit the G and B strings. And then with an upstroke, hit the high E and B strings. So that main phrase. And then for the rest of this first little phrase, you have another D, open, palm muted and then an upstroke on just the G and B strings. So, so far. And then you repeat the little -da -da -da, the open D and G with a hammer on. And then the just the G and B with the downstroke. And then the high E and B strings with an upstroke. And that kind of leads into the last little word of this first phrase in the first measure. It's just a downstroke on D, palm muted, and then up, down, up on, you know, the top three or four strings. So this one is a little bit tricky to play because the first measure is in 4-4 four, four, and then you have a bar of 2-4. So let me play the first measure of 4-4 four, four, and then we'll get into that little tag 2-4 uh, line. And then the bar of 2-4 is the kind of the same idea, it's just two beats of, you have the open D and G strings, and then the G and B, and then up on the E and B. And then to finish it off, you have the open D palm muted, and then the G and B strings, and then you have this open D and G that gets you into the next measure. So that measure of 2-4 by itself. And as I'm hitting those two open notes, D and G, I'm working my way back down to get my D chord in place. Because you have, on the next measure, you have the second fret of the G string in, out of this D chord shape as your first note. And you have that note with your first finger on the G string, and then you have the open high E string with hammer on to the second fret. And then three dun, 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 kind of palm muted notes on that same note you're fretting with your first finger. And I hit the D string in there too a little bit. You don't have to be that specific. Anything like that is fine. And then the next little bit of this measure is just third to second fret with your um, pinky on the third fret and then pull off to the second. After that little pull off, 
you have six sixteenth notes, one, two, three, four, five, six, to round out this phrase of the intro. And you can, you know, hit just the D string, or you can hit, you know, a combination of. It's pretty inconsistent, so just try to make it fit the style of the song. Let me play that whole intro for you again. And from there you just, on that last 16th note, you slide back up to where you started and play the whole intro phrase again. Tails it, can you bring me a two paper towels? Thank you. It's gotta go in there. <laughs> me going. Huh? Okay, that's it for the first phrase. That's probably the weirdest one too. Well, there are a few more places where there are bars of two fours, but like once you have that part, learned the second phrase comes pretty quickly and it uses the same kind of a D minor 9 shape. Let me play the phrase for you slowly. So the main riff is just a palm muted D string with a downstroke and then you have up, down, up on the top, you know, three-ish strings. You don't have to be too specific here again. And then you have um, let off with your index finger and play a down stroke, and then hammer on, and then down up on the top three or four strings, and that's the main phrase. So, and so you just do that three times. And then we move back to a, just a D major chord. And so when you get to this D chord, it's very similar to the D chord in the first phrase of the intro, but it does change a little bit. It's this right here, downstroke on D, upstroke on the open E, then hammer on to the second fret, then downstroke again on the D, upstroke on the B string, downstroke on the G string. So. And then you have a D sus4, full chord. Let it off or pull it off with your pinky to a regular D. And then you have down, up, down, up, down, up. Six sixteenth notes just on a regular D chord, so the downs will be on a D. And the ups will be on the top two or three strings. So let me play that second phrase uh, of the intro for you. From there you play the first part of that again, of that phrase again without the D chord this time. You just play this part again. And that gets us into what I would say is verse one. And the verses to the song move to kind of more of a normal strumming pattern just through some chord progressions, but it is a little bit strange. Uh, when you get into verse one, you have this chord progression D, F, C, G, D, F, C, F. And that's the four bar progression that we're gonna be using mostly for the verses, but the strumming and a lot of the hammer runs and things vary a little bit. And then once you get play those, that chord progression twice, the third time it comes around, it changes a little bit to bring you into the chorus. And here's the progression that goes into the chord. D, F, C, G this time, then D, C, F, G. So just keep that in mind. If work on the, those progressions if you need to, you know, just change between the chords without the parts, the strumming patterns and everything before you get into it. Let's go ahead and go through the first one. So we start off on a D chord. And every time you see a D chord uh, in this verse, this is the pattern you're gonna play for any D chord. So you have the low D string, maybe throw the G string in there too with the downstroke, and then a down up on the full chord, so one E and a, uh, and then you have your index finger coming off of this D chord, then hit the whole chord, and hammer on, and then down up. So that's your pattern for your D chord. And that gives you some nice motion, that's what I was talking about, this is a really good song to learn how to put motion with your chord. 
So I would recommend working on this one chord at a time to kind of program it in because things get a little hairy when you know the patterns change for different chords. Then you move to an F chord. I don't use the F bar chord throughout this entire song. It's either this version of the F or an F major 7. All right, let's move to the F chord. It starts off with a downstroke on the D and G strings and then an upstroke. That's palm muted, by the way, and then an upstroke for the whole chord. And then you let your, in, your middle finger off to play the G string open and play down, up, and then another down, but after the down, you hammer on and then play another down, up. Check out the tab. It's a little bit convoluted. Listen to this song a lot to get it in your head before trying to do it, but here's the pattern, this first pattern for the F chord. So that first measure together with the D. The C chord that's coming up is where a lot of the variables throughout the course occur, so just keep an eye out for that. This first C is uh, three beats. So you start off with a downstroke on the A and D, with the C chord, then let your second finger up, hit the D and G strings open, then hammer on with your second finger, then hit the G and B strings, and hammer on with your second finger there on the second fret, and then let back off of that second fret, and play the G and B strings, and then put your whole C chord back on, and then just drop down, down, And I kind of hit the middle strings for the first down, and then the these three strings, the A, D, and G strings for the down. And then you end that measure with a G, and you just play down, down, up. The second half of this phrase goes back to the D, so again, anytime you have the D, it's the exact same thing, so play that. Next you have an F, but this time it's an F major 7, so make sure to hit the open high E string instead of that little bar out there. But it's the exact same rhythmical phrase, so... From there you have a C chord, and it starts off the same way, but it's only two beats this time. And you end it with two little 16th notes there. Down, up. And then you go to an F chord, but this time we're only going to be using an F triad, just these three notes. And it starts off like this with the F note, with your third finger there on the D string. And then you have up, down, up, and then a down with your middle finger hammering onto the second fret. So it starts off with your middle finger not even on that G string. Then you hammer on, and then two more down, up. So that measure. It's a lot easier to get the feel for it than it is to intellectualize it. So let me play that whole first phrase for the verse for you. And that's a lot, but once you learn those variations, the next two phrases are a little bit easier. There are just some little things that change here and there. Let's dig into the second phrase. Starts off on a D, so it's the exact same. Remember, D is always the same. And then it starts off on an F, starts out the exact same way, this four-string no, four F. And moves to a C, but it's slightly different this time. Same basic idea, though. But an eighth note there instead of two sixteenth notes. Then you move to a G and you have a pretty simple strumming pattern here. Down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Second half of the second phrase of the verse goes back to a D, so exact same riff. Then you have F major 7 this time, same rhythmic idea though. Then move to a C, same idea, but you have two sixteenths at the end this time. And then you go back to your F, just your three note F that starts off with your middle finger up. Same exact idea. So the second phrase of the verse would be this. Don't forget to palm mute where the chords change the first little downstroke. So. On to the third phrase of the verse. Starts off the exact same way, but it changes toward the end to get you into the chorus. But start off on a D, exact same D. -ra. Then move to an F shape, this little mini bar one. 
and then it starts off the exact same way. It moves to a C, this time with just an eighth note at the end. Then G, the exact same riff over the G. Or exact same strumming pattern. Now here's where it changes a little bit. You go back to your D, play the exact same riff. And then go to a C here and play pretty much the exact same riff as you have been for every C here, but just end with an eighth note instead of two sixteenths. And then you have an F chord, just this F triad, just down, down, up, and then up, down, up. So for beats one and two, then move to a G, just down, down, up. And that leads you into this little lead line that goes into the chorus, and it's just it starts off on your G, third finger, third fret of the low E, open high E, and I'm doing alternate picking here, so down, up, the A string is that second note, then up, and then the second fret of the A, when I use my second finger with the down stroke, and then an up stroke, third fret of the A, so. And then that leads us into the chorus, first two notes of the chorus, to finish this lead line off are just two D notes, open D's and I use downstroke for both of those. All right, that gets us into the chorus. So we already have those two D notes. From there, just play a D sus two chord and then hammer on to the second fret. So then another down up on a regular D chord and then a D sus four with a down, a regular D with an up, a D sus two with a down and then regular D with a down and a D sus two with a down. That sounds like a lie, but listen to the song. You'll get a feel for it. It sounds like this. One more time, a little slower. From there, it moves to A minor seven chord with two down strokes. And if you don't know A minor seven, just take your third finger off of a regular A minor. And then you have an A7 sus4, just put your pinky down on the third fret of the B string, play an up, and then a down stroke that's muted, and another up. So from the A minor to the A7 sus4, that's it. And do it one more time slower. Then you move to an E minor 7 chord. And to get there, I like to just take my two fingers off these two and put my second finger over on the second fret of the A string and I play it down, it's a dotted eighth note, and then I have four more strums on that E minor seven chord and just up, down, up, down. We're switching to a G really quickly and playing up and another up. And the accents here are a little bit weird, but if you listen to it again, you'll get it. Here's that measure starting with the A minor seven all together. Let me play the whole first phrase of the chorus because it is a little bit weird when you're first learning it. And from there, you just play that same progression three more times, but the next three times are just a, a lot simpler. And here it is on the D chord, so here's your strumming pattern. It's just down, 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 up, and then do that again for beats three and four. Down, 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 up. And then you have your A minor seven, just down, up, and then an E minor seven, down, and then three more strums on that E minor seven before you hit the G, down, up, down, and then the G. So that's the simplified phrase that you play three times to finish the course. And once you get to that point in the song, you just go back around and do the verse and the chorus again. Uh, it's in the jam track for you, it's in the tab for you. If you see the little sign that says Da Segno, that just takes you back to the little funny looking symbol. Sorry, the sheet music I have here is on the floor. It takes you back to the um, funny symbol at the beginning of verse one. And it's just telling you to play verse one and the chorus again all the way through. Until you get to the outro where things change a little bit. Um, we'll go through it, but it's just variations on things you've already learned. So once you hit that last G chord uh, of the chorus, so if you're going... It 
as soon as you hit that, you need to go back into this D minor nine shape and play. And that's the whole phrase. Let me break that down for you a little bit. It starts off instead of the other part, like the intro, it starts off right on the open D and G strings with this, like a thumpy palm muted thing. And then you hammer onto the fifth fret right away. And then the G and B strings, then the high E and B strings, and then that open D, and then the G and B strings again. And that's the main phrase. So it just repeats that. But the second time you play through that phrase, you have the twice instead of once. So you have this, and then do it again, but have the the percussive thing twice. And then do it again, but have the percussive thing twice again. And end off on this. And then it, from there it goes back into the other part of the intro on the regular D major chord. It's a little bit of variation on it because it's not the exact same as when we played it in the intro. So you have just the D string, then a D sus2, and on to a D, and then just a D string, B string, G string, then a D sus4, and then pull it off to the just a D, and then just strum down, up, down, up, down, up on a D sus2. So that whole measure. From there you need to go kind of back into this part, but there are no hammer-ons this time. The main phrase is just the D string and then up, down, up on the top strings and then the fifth fret of the G string and then up, down, up on the top string. So that's the main phrase and you just do that three times. From there, you just go back into what will be a verse idea. So the specifics on here, you can play anything you want there, but the specifics are just a D, same D riff, then an F major seven. Same riff you would play over any of the other F major sevens that you've played so far. Then a C. Same C riff, just ending with an eighth note. And then you have two eighth notes on a G, then a whole note on a G, and a D to finish it. Let me play that whole outro for you. So that's it for this song. Um, again, it's a little bit deceptively easy sounding. It's a little bit tougher to get the feel and all the notes right than it is when you, you know, when you might think it is when you first listen to it. So let me know in the comments below which songs you want to learn. The entire reason I did this video is because uh, a student that I had a private lesson with wanted to learn this song. It's like, hmm, I should make a video on that. And uh, hopefully a lot of people will get a lot of stuff out of it. Again, you have the resources you need for this on NateSavage.com. You have the jam track and the tab. And if you need any help with this or anything else on guitar, you can always email me or just visit NateSavage.com to schedule a private lesson. Don't forget to comment below and I'll see you in the next one.